Amber Brown Goes Forth, Chapter 8. I, Amber Brown, want to declare the first week of school a do-over. Like when you mess up at some sport thing and get to start again at the beginning. If I could just stamp my fingers and yell do-over, there are a couple of things that I would do differently. I would not mention Justin to Brandy, especially not in a comparing way. I would try not to care so much that she doesn't seem to want to be my friend. I would try to just be happy that most of the kids are friendly and not so unhappy that I don't have a best friend and that I don't know how to make one. I would not show up for the first day at elementary extension since my name wasn't even on the list. I could have hidden out in the bathroom or something until my mother picked me up. But now I'm on the list and I've got to sit there with a group of kids from kindergarten through sixth grade. I think they should change the name from elementary extension to kids being held captive in the cafeteria waiting for a grown-up to pick them up. I would try not to think about all of the things that are bugging me. My parents getting divorced, Justin and his family so far away, Max so near. But even if we work to snap my fingers and yell do-over, it would never work. First of all, I can't even snap my fingers. Instead of the snap sound, I make a sort of thwip sound. And second, I, Amber Brown, know that just wanting something a whole lot doesn't mean that I'm going to get it. And I hate knowing that. Amber, Mother calls up from downstairs. Supper time. I walk to the steps and call down. In a minute. Washing my hands, I continue to think about all the stuff that's driving me nuts. On the way downstairs, I practice snapping my fingers. Thwip, thwip. I go into the dining room. Usually we eat at the kitchen table, but tonight mom said we should do something special. Take some time for ourselves to talk and hang out. She's so busy now. Because she has to leave work early to pick me up, she has more work to do at home. I look at the three place settings on the table. I thought it was going to be just the two of us. Maybe she's asked Max to dinner. I thought she said that she was going to wait a little while before she brought him over to the house. I, Amber Brown, must find out the answer before I get very upset. Mom, I yell, who else is coming to dinner? No one, just for the two of us, she calls out from the kitchen. Again, I look at the table. Three plates, three knives, three forks, three spoons, three napkins, three glasses, it looks like three to me. I stand there wondering. Does my mom have an imaginary playmate? Has Max turned invisible? And this is their way of him being in the house without me having to see him? Is my mother getting old timer's disease? Are my eyes getting bad and I'm seeing triple or double plus one? Have I turned into a major warrior and there is some regular reason for three of everything? My mother walks into the room, puts down the bowl of spaghetti, and says, I don't believe it. She picks up the extra setting, puts it away, and again says, I don't believe it. She talks to herself as if I'm not even there. I just set the table for the three of us, Phil, me, and Amber, as if nothing's changed. I tug at her sleeve. Maybe that means you want to get back together again with Daddy. She shakes her head. No, it just means that I'm tired and I just wasn't thinking. For a long time, the table was set for three, and I guess I just did it again out of habit. Getting very quiet, she sits down at the table. I sit down, too. That's kind of like when I start going over to Justin's old house or when I pick up the phone to call his old number. She nods and smiles. I guess it's all part of our history, and we don't always remember that it's not part of our present, at least not in the same way. I, Amber Brown, think I am too young to have a history especially one with so much sad stuff in it. I remember when everything was fun and easy. I hope that isn't history. I look at my mother. She looks sad and tired. I know how she feels. I know how I feel. Mom, let's have a spaghetti slurping contest. She laughs. Amber, I'm a grown-up. Grown-ups don't have spaghetti slurping contests. I make a silly face at her, and she laughs. Oh, please, 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 I beg. She shakes her head, laughs again, and then nods. We measure out spaghetti strands, and then we slurp. I win. The best out of three, my mother said.
My mother has a line of spaghetti sauce on her chin. We slurp again. This time she wins. A third slurp and Amber Brown is the champion. I look at my mother's face. It is a grinning spaghetti sauce messy face. Can you teach me to snap my fingers, I ask, and show her how I make the thwip sound. Nothing to it, she snaps her fingers. We practice. Soon I am making a sort of thwip snap sound. It's not perfect, but I'm getting there. When I do learn to do it perfectly, I'm going to snap my fingers and say do over. If it doesn't work, I'm going to say keep on going. I, Amber Brown, am going to get through all of this. Thwip snap, thwip snap. Chapter 9 Elementary Extension Every afternoon, it's elementary extension, the same old thing. But it's different today. Brandy's here. I heard her tell Mrs. Holt that her mom has gotten a job. That means she's going to be here from now on. When she walked into the room, I smiled at her. A kind of friendly but not too friendly smile. I, Amber Brown, have decided not to worry so much about making new best friend, even though I really want one. So I gave her just a normal smile that you give to the people in your classroom, not a please, oh, please be my best friend smile. She nodded, looked around the room, and saw that we were the only two fourth graders in the room, and then she sat down next to me. There's a loud noise coming from the other side of the room. Three of the fifth grade boys are pretending to be karate masters, chopping at the air and making noises like, Hiya! Not the hello, Hiya, but the karate, Hiya! The teacher makes them sit down. In fact, she makes everyone sit down and then yells, Put your hands on your desk! I start to laugh. I try not to, but I can't help it. Would you mind sharing what the rest of us... What is so funny, Miss Brown? The teacher says in a sarcastic voice. I can't help it if when you say, put your hands on your desk, I want to say, I can't. I'm still attached to my shoulders. She looks at me. I think about how my parents are always telling me that I'm going to need a good education to get ahead. And I wonder how I'm going to get ahead if I have to put it on my, if I have to put it on my desk. I just can't stop laughing. I try, but once I start, I can't stop. You have detention. The teacher walks up to me. Put your head down right now. I do. Somehow, when you have to stay after school every day, it's kind of hard to worry about getting detention. I keep my head on the desk and think about how, if Justin were here, I could put my sweater over my head and pretend that I had no head. I look over at Brandy. She raises one eyebrow and then bites her lip to keep from laughing. I put the sweater over my head and pretend that I have no head. She sort of explodes with laughter. That makes me laugh more. It gets me another day of detention. It also gets Brandy a day of detention. The more I try not to laugh, the more I do. I just can't stop. Brandy can't either. The teacher gets very annoyed. I get a third day of detention and then a fourth. Brandy gets a second and a third day of detention. I sit there thinking about my four days of detention. Once again, Amber Brown goes fourth.